Uh, today we have a very special guest. She's a longtime hacker in the best sense of the word, and now she served as serves as the uh, digital minister of Taiwan. Please welcome Audrey Tang. Hello, good local time, everyone. 2020年のパンデミック開始早々に台湾のマスク不足を解決へと導いたデジタル大臣オードリー・タン今回のメルカリギアーズレクチャーシリーズでは事前にメルカリ社員から集めた大臣への質問に答えていただきます So, the first question The system to efficiently control the distribution of masks for pandemic、uh, in Taiwan has, was one of those areas that, that drew a lot of attention in Japan、uh, Can you briefly explain how this system is operated and maintained? Is there, if, or, and if there's anything special that your team is doing to, to make this whole thing、uh, operate? Okay,、uh, and for that,、uh, I will maybe use slides.、Uh, and so maybe we can, I, I can reconnect、uh, with the slides and with the understanding that we're making a kind of 10 minute、uh, lecture, okay? Really happy to share、uh, about the mask availability map and with some more content、uh, about how in- we improve the system so that it can ensure the fairness. So, by fairness, I mean that's one of the three pillars of the fast, fair, fun principles of our social innovation.、Um, the fast part, which is collective intelligence,、uh, really brought our early response system to play、uh, when Dr. Li Wenliang, the PRC whistleblower, hosted last year that there are seven new SARS cases. The local equivalent of Reddit, the PTT, noticed it and upvoted、uh, in a very early morning. And on that very day,、uh, we wrote an email、um, to the WHO. And on the very next day, the first day of January, we started health inspections for fly passengers from Wuhan. And this says to me two things. First, that people trust each other i- enough so, so that they can talk about this without fearing repercussions、uh, and censorship.、Uh, and then、uh, the government trusts people enough so that when we look at those upvoted、um, instances of reports, we take it really seriously and treat it as if SARS happened again, something we've always been preparing, running yearly drills since 2003. <clears throat> and Core to this、uh, collective intelligence system is this very simple thing called a toll free number, the 1922. Anybody can call the 1922 number and get an explanation of、uh, the latest epidemiology developments.、Uh, and they can also make suggestions. For example, there's someone、uh, who calls saying, Oh, my boy doesn't want to go to school because when you raise your mask, you don't get to pick the color. We only have pink medical masks.、Uh, and so、uh, he fears that he will be bullied. The very next day in the daily press conference,、uh, live stream from the C You see, all the medical offices wore pink,、uh, and our minister Chen Shizhong even s a y the Pink Panther is his favorite、um, you know, anime、uh, model、uh, from his youth.、Uh, and so suddenly, the boy b e c o m e the most hip boy because、uh, only he has the color that the heroes wear.、Um, but the fear part、uh, is also important. As I mentioned, when you ration the mask, you don't get to pick the color. But how do we actually ration the mask? Well, it started uh, from uh, some proposals from the GovZero community. You see, in Taiwan, all the public services is something that GOV, the TW. And there's a bunch of people, well, me included,、uh, that just systemically looks at those GOV websites and services and see that it can be taken to another direction, forking the government, important pronunciation, fork the government so that we add、uh, a slash to the O、uh, and then we pronounce it Gov zero so that you get into the shadow government、uh, that works、uh, with the same data but in a more interactive and open way. So At any given time, on the joint that zero v the TW, these two were、uh, both、uh, participation platforms,、uh, they're real websites.、Um, there's、uh, thousands of people thinking about how to make the government services、uh, better or challenge the existing、uh, weaknesses in the、uh, government's digital services. And so、um, there was At the time when we did not start the mask rationing,、uh, but people already、uh, were spreading a lot of、uh, information on the line、uh, into an encrypted system about which store still have masks and which does not. And there's a person with the name、uh, Howard Wu Wu Zhang Wei、uh, in Tainan City uh, that uh, gets fed up by those messages on the line platform, which is very difficult to search anyway.、Uh, and so、um, he coded up,、uh, just like Ushahidi, a map here.、Uh, and the map shows、uh, the near 
nearby uh, both uh, pharmacies and uh, the convenience stores, but mostly convenience stores in the first uh, trial run. Uh, and everybody can just mark the map, uh, reporting how many um, um, mask stores uh, there are still have stock and how many runs out of stock. Uh, and so it became an instant hit, uh, meaning that the, so, uh, the social and the institutional media discovers it. Uh, and because he used Google Map uh, very quickly, uh, he owed Google like 26K or something. Um, use not less <laughs> in, in API usage fees. Um, and so he had to close the website because he couldn't afford it anymore. Uh, Google will later on waive his fees uh, and then um, uh, ask for the GovZero's help uh, because GovZero um, has a bunch of people very versed in reusing existing uh, infrastructure like GitHub Pages or OpenStreetMap or whatever uh, that can help uh, reducing the cost. And I was among the people who contributed to his bill <laughs> to, to try this out. Uh, and when he engaged in a discussion uh, in the GovZero community, there's many people helping him. For example, Finjian Kiang, uh, also from Tainan, um, uh, developed this uh, map. Uh, you can see a lot of little red and green triangles, uh, and uh, uh, they represent the uh, pharmacies, uh, but they do not actually um, need to pay Google because of that, uh, because it uses uh, open source uh, map tiles, map box, and things like that. And so because of this, uh, we made sure that there's multiple implementations of the same idea. And meanwhile, instead of relying on people to report, which probably only works in uh, the areas uh, with higher digital connectivity um, in civic participation, I talked with the Premier, Su Zhen Chang, saying we need to support these people because they already figure out a better way to uh, calm people down than we do. Uh, and so it's reverse procurement, their idea, our implementation. Uh, and so we implemented uh, this National Health Insurance Agency's open data channel and converted the open data to open API, meaning that uh, previously it only updates uh, at most once a day. But uh, on that day, we started uh, to update every 30 seconds. And it makes a world of difference. Because if you rely on daily updates or on volunteer reports from the user-generated content, you can't be sure that it's relevant to you. But if you update every 30 seconds, everybody queues queuing in line uh, keeps each other in check. If we see that uh, this particular one have 58 um, medical masks for adults and 196 for children, and I'm an adult, <coughs> so after I make a purchase here, uh, which at this point is nine medical masks every two weeks, um, everybody queuing after me expect this number uh, to become 49. Uh, and then uh, if it doesn't become 49, if it becomes like 70, after I make a purchase, they will call 1922 right there. <laughs> And, and say that the system is wrong. And, and so uh, the pharmacists, uh, which are already trusted because they serve the local neighborhood and the people who are uh, equipped with those uh, medical masks, uh, maps, as well as apps and chatbots and voice assistants for people with visual impairments and things like that, uh, we make sure that um, people earn each other's trust every 30 seconds as opposed to if we update every day, then it's just the government asking people to blindly trust its statistics. And so this participatory accountability is a lot like a distributed ledger because you cannot fool uh, all 100 developers, each of them have a copy of the entire history and they make analysis of the oversupply, of the undersupply. When we ramp up the me me medical mass production, uh, they hold us to account that the production actually have to go to the pharmacies. If it doesn't go to the pharmacies, uh, they expect to see uh, a growth uh, in the daily uh, distribution. If they don't see it, uh, then of course we're not actually distributing those manufactured masks and so on. And so it increases everybody's trust uh, with each other. And Another good thing uh, about the system is that these analyses are not made by the GovTech people, right? This is entirely made by the civic tech people. And the civic tech people can keep each other honest as well. Uh, and so there was even a time uh, where there was a legislator uh, with the name An Gao, uh, Gao Hong An. Uh, she, before entering the parliament, uh, was um, a VP of data analytics in the Foxconn uh, company. Uh, and so she knows something about data analytics, I guess. Uh, and then she uh, made a parliamentary inquiry uh, using the uh, Jiu Ping An um, mask map uh, to Minister Chen Shizhong, the Minister of Health and Welfare, uh, and say that you're doing a, a bad job because uh, the distribution is unfair. You distribute on city and county level, but within the same county, there are easier to access spots uh, that are, are more urban.
open and hard to access but that are more rural so you cannot just look at uh, the even distribution because the time cost for each person to get access to those pharmacies is uneven so so your your uh, algorithm is wrong basically uh, that's what she said uh, and instead of um, defending uh, jumping to defend existing policy minister Chen Shizhong who was enjoying and still is enjoying great popularity uh, didn't fight the opposition party um, he simply said legislator teach us uh, and so immediately we began working on revising the system and then the day afterward we rolled out a new system and Ms. Gao posted that the, in the wake of yesterday's questioning is today's improvement and so this kind of data-based collaboration shines a light on Taiwan's political field uh, and instead of conflict we, we do co-creation uh, and so to me it's like a Pygmalion effect right the more trust the government has to the citizens the more trustworthy are the citizens uh, and so uh, after uh, a week a week or so uh, of the improvement of the mass rationing uh, we started incorporating the pharmacies um, ideas and then uh, for example the different opening hours pushing a button to disappear from the map uh, and things like that and after a few iterations uh, we ensure that uh, almost 70% uh, of people get access to the mask however uh, the numeric model tells us for the R value to be under one that is to say for the pandemic to be under control um, we need to increase that number to 75 percent that's the safety line above which uh, the local transmission doesn't spread below which the local transmission will spread um, and so we looked at the analytics and see how many people are not uh, getting access to the mask so it turns out that there are uh, three different reasons. First, um, there are places that are farther away from the pharmacies, so people cannot uh, get to it that easily. And the second is that it takes time uh, to queue in line. So people who work very um, um, like demanding jobs and so on, they, they don't have uh, half an hour to queue in front of a pharmacy. So they will just keep collecting altogether if they don't live uh, with a family a member that can take their NHI card. And finally, in the Xinju like industrial science park, like the Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Company or uh, the um, municipalities with financial sectors, especially the Taipei City, there are people who work very very long hours so by the time they're off work it's like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. and all the pharmacies will have closed by then and so even though they have plenty of time by that time they uh, they want to queue but there's nowhere to queue they could not get uh, the mask anyway and so that's why we revised the system to make uh, amendments so that we work with the stores that are open 24 hours and those uh, stores uh, some of which present in Japan uh, <laughs> including 7-eleven uh, family Mars uh, high life and OK Mart also uh, rolled out their own bonus programs because for people to pre-order and collect it they will not queue and if they do not queue uh, then they have extra time to shop uh, and so it's a, a good thing overall for them to attract people to the pre-ordering and because there's uh, around 12,000 uh, convenience stores it's double the amount of the pharmacy and we're not closing off the pharmacy distribution either so basically it grow uh, like triple the amount of the collection spots and of of course these are 24 hours and so even people who work very long uh, night shifts or whatever can very easily get their pre-order the mask and so the main uh, challenge was just uh, like people were afraid uh, that uh, there will be not enough mask now that uh, the rest of the society joins in pre-ordering the mask uh, and so Minister Chen Shizhong had to say uh, definitely there's sufficient amount in stock if you pre-order you're bound to get it uh, and that uh, we hold to that promise we never draw lots or uh, do anything like that uh, we fulfilled all the orders from the pre-ordering and and that pushed uh, the amount of accessibility uh, to more than 80 percent almost 90 percent and that's when in Taiwan we're fairly convenient uh, like uh, the fairly convenient access to mask made sure that uh, the R value is under one but uh, we still have not forgotten the remaining like 15 percent so so where are they uh, it turns out there are either people who don't have smartphones like the really elderly elderly people uh, who cannot operate the pre-ordering system or um, if they are migrant workers sometimes they use prepaid sim card they don't have a sim card to their name so even though they are insured by the NHI it's not that easy to get access to the uh, real name system uh, of the NHI app so for them uh, we work with the um, kiosks 
so that you can actually go to the kiosk instead of using your mobile phone you can insert your NHI card to make a pre-order of course the drawback is that you cannot choose other convenience store to pick up you can only pick up on this the same kiosk uh, that you have pre-ordered that week but it became very convenient so like I myself go to the closest convenience store which is just like 30 seconds of walk uh, and just insert my NHI card every other week uh, to, to collect nine medical masks is part of my weekly routine well bi-weekly routine now um, and so because it's so convenient there's uh, many more people joining so I think uh, the latest number is uh, more than 95% so what does the other 5% do well it turns out they have plenty of medical masks uh, in their house already <laughs> they have stockpiled a lot of medical masks already uh, and so they, they don't need to make a purchase but since we ask they tell us uh, we want to donate we want to make sure that people in Japan for example the humanitarian uh, work uh, can receive the donation from Taiwan and they're willing to earmark to dedicate their uncollected uh, medical mask um, quota to that purpose and so we also uh, then provided that option in the NHI app so anyone can click uh, their personal health bank and say I want to um, dedicate my uncollected medical mask so at this point uh, today um, there's more than 700,000 dedicators who dedicate a total of more than 6 million medical masks uh, to international humanitarian aid and they can choose to be anonymous you can see a lot of anonymous people here or they can choose to reveal their name and so it's a kind of data collaborative uh, where they publish um, only the, the number of the quota that they dedicate so I enter my name so you can see that uh, my name Tang Feng have dedicated 36 musk but actually only six came from me uh, the other 18 from Tang Feng Ping uh, 9 from Tang Feng Ming and 3 from Tang Feng Xian uh, uh, from people who share part of my name uh, and so that uh, ensure that even for people who have plenty of masks uh, in their house they still feel solidarity not with uh, the Taiwan uh, humanitarian workers only but with the, the world's humanitarian workers and, and that's what we call uh, Hu Taiwan Zhu Shi Jie uh, or just Taiwan Can Help you can check it out more at this website Taiwan Can Help that us.